where is the ground here? I can now do ground just by looking to the motherboard. Here is the ground. Why? Because this pin is connected to this part, the big part. Always this big part here in the motherboard means the ground. And this thin part, as you can see here, means signal, signals and voltages. So this is the ground. So once this is the ground, I should put the positive terminal in the ground. So please remember, for bridge rectifier, you should put the positive terminal in the negative terminal of the bridge rectifier. And then, if I check between these two pins, I should find 500 or 600. This is the first diode. As you can see, we have. So let's check. As you can see, we have 500. And this is the second diode. Okay? So if I swap the props, I will now put the black probe here in the negative terminal of the bridge rectifier. As you can see, nothing in the multimeter. This one also, nothing in the multimeter. Okay? The capacitor charge and discharge means the capacitor is good. Let's check this one also. The capacitor should charge and discharge, as you can see. So, the capacitor charge and discharge means these two capacitors are exactly. good. Okay. Between this point over here, as you can see, and this point, I should get a continuity, as you can see. Why? Because this point belongs to this part, and this one belongs to this part. Hi everyone, so this is a very important video when I'm going to teach you the rotors. We're gonna basically see two kinds of rotors as you can see. So I'm going to open or to disassemble these rotors. We're gonna learn about its component and the common fault of rotors. And of course I'm going to teach you how to diagnose and fix any rotor you have so this is a very important guide so i invite you to watch this video until the end because i'm going to share with you a very informative information so let's get started but first before diving into the details make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated for future videos so let's get started so first of all i'm going to open to disassembly these two rotors So guys, as you can see here, always pay attention because I removed two screws over here. As you can see, these two screws, but one screw still here under this label. So to find the screw, you should just make like this. As you can see, here we have something. So let's see here. So it's not here. Pay attention to this, as you can see, locker. Okay, you should press this locker like this, okay, in order to open this router, okay? So we have the second motherboard, as you can see over here, but the component is in the back of this motherboard. Anyway, we, have, we see here an IC, we see here, here a regulator, antenna, etc. So I should remove this screw in order to make sure we have the component in the other side. So that's it. So we have the motherboard as you can see over here. Okay. So this is basically an improved rotor. Okay. Where we have integrated circuits. It's exactly like the phone, the cell phone. And this one a little bit, we can see that this is a little bit an old rotor, but a very efficient and a very strong and good rotor. So now 
first of all I'm going to teach you and to know all about this component over here okay and also over here and then I'm going to teach you of course do common faults in this kind of rotors and also how to test some component using the multimeter of course so let's see this first first rotor so let's see this rotor first okay so let's zoom a little bit so as you can see over here this is basically the antenna okay here we have the antenna here we have the antenna cables as you can see here this is basically the network card okay that contain also many components including the processor the oscillator crystal here we have a regulator etc okay and then over here also we have the cpu this is basically the cpu for the whole router this cpu basically is for just for this network card okay and this one as you can see is for the motherboard the whole motherboard this is the heatsink okay so here as you can see we have the ram okay so here this is ram the random access memory two chips as you can see over here <coughs> so here we have the power supply circuit okay this is the power supply circuit this is basically the dc jack okay and this is the on off button here we have this capacitors basically is for to smooth the current this is uh, electrolytic capacitor here we have an inductor and over here this is basically a fuse okay this is a fuse okay of course we have another fuse here we have another fuse here for protection here as you can see for this connector the ADSL connector we have always a fuse and also we have a diode over here this is basically for protection we're gonna test all these components okay so here also in this circuit the circuit basically for the network or the network card we have two inductors as you can see over here we have capacitors to filter the current okay and we have here a MOSFET okay and also for the CPU always you will find capacitors because capacitors basically are used to smooth the voltage or the current okay to make the voltage a pure voltage okay as you can see all here we have a lot of capacitors okay so this is RAMs uh, so those also are capacitors okay so I should basically remove this card in order to make tank easier for me so let's remove it as you can see here now we remove the card let's remove this antenna cable now this is good okay now we can test this component as you can see here the card seems good always you should check the soldering state is it good or not okay so here for example we have the button sometimes you can find that this button is not working so let's begin with the button how can we check whether this button is good or not i show you how so basically here for this button as you can see here if we put the multimeter okay to continuity option as you can see here here we have these two pins basically are the, so we have these two pins basically if we check these two here connected connected so this is ground these two are not connected but if I press here the knob as you can see now the pins are connected if I press again no continuity okay so this is how you can check the, the, the switch okay <coughs> So we have the power jack, basically for the power jack you can just check the pin inside it, its state and then we have these two capacitors and we have this inductor to check basically here 
we have two inductors we have one inductor here and another here this is basically a transformer we called it at a small transformer so let's check it so if we want to check this transformer basically so we have the first inductor as you can see these two pins are first inductor as you can see and over here we have the second inductor so the transformer is good so let's go directly let's check this basically it 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 seems to be a fuse so let's check it no this is the bridge rectifier this is not a, a fuse this is a bridge rectifier okay so we have <coughs> the input the dc input we have transformer we have the bridge rectifier and then we have capacitors to filter the current okay and over here we have a diode this diode basically let's check this diode to check this diode we're gonna put the black probe in the cathode as you can see and the red probe in the anode we should get about 500 600 or 150 no problem so the, the diode is good if i swap the probes as you can see nothing in the multimeter okay so the power supply circuit is good of course for capacitors how to check the capacitors you can check the capacitors using just the continuity here can just go here as you can see so we have here so we have here as you can see the negative terminal and the positive terminal because this path is the ground so let's check this capacitor as you can see charge and discharge you see the capacitor charge and discharge means the capacitor is good let's check this one also the capacitor should charge and discharge as you can see so the capacitor charge and discharge means these two capacitors are good so the power supply circuit is good okay so also if we want we also let's check this fuse here so let's check whether this fuse is good or not as you can see in the multimeter so let's check so the fuse is good so you can ch check this capacitor using the same working principle just using the continuity in the multimeter and check if you get a continuity like this means the capacitor it fails okay you should replace it but of course you should not power on the motherboard if you power on the motherboard you can get a continuity in the terminals of capacitor even if the capacitor is good you can get a continuity okay so here as you can see we have leds all these components are leds or light emitting bias and over here as you can see we have several capacitors so around every ic okay you will find ceramic capacitors around every ic and as, as i told you before okay so to check whether the ic is good or not you should just check the ceramic capacitors around it if you find any shorted capacitors in the both sides means probably the ic is the failed components as you can see all ic's will find some capacitors around all ic's as you can see so basically to diagnose this kind of, of motherboard you should always begin with the input circuit as you can see as we have checked, as we have checked before if for example the motherboard is dead motherboard you can check the switch you can check of course this the inductors for this electromagnetic interface you can check the dual the bridge rectifier okay and then check all so compound like fuse like diode like these capacitors and of course uh, you should of course make a visual inspection okay so let's check for example this bridge rectifier i will show you how to check the bridge rectifier so basically here for this bridge rectifi rectifier as you can see we have four pins over here so four pins means we have four diodes inside it so let's for example look for the ground where is the ground here i can know the ground just by looking to the motherboard 
Here is the ground. Why? Because the spin is connected to this part, the big part. Always this big part here in the motherboard means the ground. And this thin part, as you can see here, means signal, signals and voltages. So this is the ground. So once this is the ground, I should put the positive terminal in the ground. So please remember, for bridge rectifier, you should put the positive terminal in the negative terminal of the bridge rectifier. And then, if I check between these two pins, I should find 500 or 600. This is the first diode. As you can see, we have... So let's check. As you can see, we have 500. And this is the second diode. Okay? So if I swap the props, I will now put the black probe here in the negative terminal of the bridge rectifier. As you can see, nothing in the multimeter. This one also, nothing in the multimeter. Okay? Okay? So this is how we can check the bridge rectifier. Okay? So please remember, always to look for the ground here, you should always, this is the ground, the big path, as you can see here, or color is the ground. So if I check, for example, between this point over here, as you can see, and this point, I should get a continuity, as you can see. Why? Because this point belongs to this part, and this one belongs to this part. So let's see this motherboard also, guys, as you can see. So this motherboard basically is an improved motherboard where we have the DC jack. Do you see? This, this is the, the, the DC jack. Here we have the on-off button. Here we have the capacitor, okay, for to make a smart voltage for filtering, okay. This is the, the network IC, and here we have integrated circuits here inside. Okay, and what we have also here, we have another electrode capacitor, inductor, here we have an IC, always ceramic capacitors around the IC. And over here we have a diode. So let's check, for example, this diode, let's check whether this diode is good or not. So here we have the cathode, as you can see over here, we have cathode here and we have anode here. We get a reading in the multimeter, if I swap the probes, nothing. In the, multimeter, in the multimeter. So basically the same working principle. To test this motherboard, you will use the same working principle. Okay? So that's it for this video. Uh, maybe I will make another part, part 2 for this video, in order to, to go deeper into integrated circuits. So thank you very much guys. And please don't forget to subscribe and to share the video with other people, interested people like you. And for anyone who wants to join me in, the, in my Patreon page, you are very welcome. If you want to be in contact with me very closely, I will give you my WhatsApp number and you can chat with me and you are very welcome. And of course, I can assist you until you fix your laptop or your computer or I don't know any any electronic device, no problem. So join me in the Patreon page as a mentorship experience member and feel free to ask. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.